So we're going to talk about transformations of the complex plane. Um, now transformations are something that you've done about since GCSE. In GCSE you did about translations, enlargements, reflections, rotations. Um, and we're going to look at some of those today uh, for complex numbers. Um, you may have done this in FP1, you would have done about matrices and how they can be used to map linear transformations of the xy plane. Um, so this is going to give us some more interesting than linear. Um, by the time we get to the, the heart and the meat of this very difficult topic, we're doing some things called um, Mobius transformations. And Mobius transformations are, are very interesting and related to, actually related to the sphere, the transformations in the sphere. But today we're just going to get our heads around what it means to be a complex transformation. Um, just some terminology really, and see some of our old familiar uh, transformations from GC just represented in complex number format. So it should be fairly easy going, hopefully. Um, so here we have two planes. We've got the uh, the Z plane and the W plane. Um, now this is very reminiscent of sort of functions where you have your, your input and your output. So if it was a normal function, you'd have your X values and your Y values. Um, normally you show that on one graph because you can have an x value and a y value on one graph. The problem with complex numbers is you can't have 2D and then another 2D giving you 4D. You can't have a 4D graph. So we've got to show it's two different um, two different planes and then things mapping from here to here. Um, but you still write down your transformation very similarly. You write down your output and then you write down your in terms of your input. So this is a bit like writing down y in terms of x. You write w in terms of z. Uh, let's let's try and see what this this particular transformation does. It takes points from Z to W. So we've got to pick points in Z and see what happens to them when we move to W. So let's let's pick a point. Let's pick the origin. Nice one. Uh, let's see what happens here. So W, if we put Z is equal to zero, we'd find that W was equal to three. So that means that the point zero gets mapped over here to the point three. So what it's doing is just pick this point up and moved it along to three. Um, let's try another point. Let's try minus one. So we put z is minus one. Minus one plus three is two. So it's taken minus one and moved it along to two. And then let's try another one. Minus three. W to minus three plus three is going to be zero. It's taken minus three and it moved it across to. Ah, yeah, you can see what's going on. It's taking all these points, just sort of sliding them across. So it's just mapping them by sliding them to one side by three. And at the minute, we've really just done. Um, some very basic math, something you something you might show like a year seven um, with functions. What makes it slightly harder for us, not much harder, but slightly harder is the fact we've actually got more than just real numbers we can plug in. We've got a whole complex plane of numbers. And so we might as well choose a complex number. Let's just choose i for and there's an example. Um, then we could do i plus three. And that would give us, yeah, i plus 3, because you can't put these things together. In fact, you probably write it as 3 plus i, just because you want the real part first and the imagined part second. Um, but we'll do is move that i across to here, at 3 plus i. And you could do it for the other one as well, like minus 1 plus i would be moved to 2 plus i, because minus 1 plus i plus 3 is 2 plus i. I told you today would not be too taxing, didn't I? Um, just here we've got minus 3 plus i, and that gets mapped to... To I. And in fact, what's doing is every point is being mapped along by three. So we recognize that this is indeed a translation. It's a translation, and if you're doing it in the old school vector format, it was translating by three in the x direction and zero in the y direction, right? Uh, we could do other translations, things like this. That would be a translation. This time, translating by three in the x direction and then two in the y direction this one would be a translation but this time there's no real part so it's not moving in the x direction it's moving down by three in the y direction so this is moving along by three and up by two this one here is just going down by three this one here was just going to the left by three see not too hard um Let's look at another type. So we could do maybe w equal to 4z. Let's just draw myself a z plane and a w plane. Z plane. W plane. 
Okay, and so for this one, um, we could do mapping some points. Uh, zero for four times zero is zero. Let me write them down here just in case. We can map one. Uh, w is equal to four times one. We're just doing four times z, which is going to be four. So it gets mapped over here to four. So the one gets sort of pulled apart. This zero has stayed the same place, actually, hasn't it? A special name for that. This is called a fixed point. Or even more special name, it's called an invariant point. If you notice, I cannot spell invariant. Other points, um, I, I would get mapped to somewhere else. Four times I would be four I. So I, yeah, because it's happening, it's, it's, it's an enlargement, it's expanding about the origin, it's an enlargement about the origin. Minus one would go to minus four, uh, minus I would go down here to minus four I. The whole thing is just enlarging. This is an enlargement. Uh, it's got a center, uh, the center is the origin, and it's got a scale factor. Of a four. I suppose essentially you could write it as being zero zero, but for us, a single zero is fine because it's a complex number and zero is a complex number. Um, if you're doing it in terms of x and y uh, plane, you'd be doing zero on the x and zero on the y, which is the same thing as saying the complex number is zero. Um, obviously, choosing a different number here gives you a different enlargement. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, so that's basic transformations. Of course, this is far too easy for an FB2 chapter alone, right? So we need to be getting on to talking things of this kind of form w is equal to 1 over z plus i or something of the form like w is equal to z plus 2 over z plus 1 and these things are called mobius transformations and they're the kind of things that we want to talk about next unfortunately there's not enough time to do it now or, or fortunately depending on how you feel about that um, so the minute i leave you these very basic introductions of z being mapped to w See you later.